and welcome to Shabbat in Your Home. We so enjoy having you join us each week with our family. And before we get started, we want to just let you know some resources. If you go to celebration.org forward slash resources, you can follow along with us every Shabbat right here with the Shabbat guide and also the feast guide. And now we're going to continue with the lighting of the candles and taking communion. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam, asher kitshanu b'mitzvotah v'tzivanu v'yotor l'goim v'natan lanu et Yeshua Meshicheinu or haolam. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe. You have sanctified us with your word. You commanded us to be a light unto the nations, and you gave us Yeshua our Messiah, who is the light of the world. Amen. Amen. And now for the remembering the blood of Yeshua, which washes away all of our sin. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam borei pri hagafen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth the fruit of the vine. Yeshua, we are so grateful for your sacrifice. Thank you for the covenant that you yes. poured out with your own blood, that you have united us and brought us into the household of the Father. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. And now for the bread, which represents the body of Messiah that was given for you and for me. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam hamotzi lechem min haaretz. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth the bread from the land. Yeshua, thank you for your provision. Yes. Thank you for giving us of your body. And we remember you tonight. It's in your name we pray. Amen. And now I just want to say a prayer over all of our families. So if you can just gather uh, around together, let's, let's agree. Father, I thank you so much, Lord, for every family. Yes, I ask Lord. that your peace, which surpasses all understanding, would be with us all. Yes. Father, as we are committing our night to you, as we are coming to you, I'm asking that you would fill each and every vessel, each and every place with your presence. Lord, I'm asking if there needs to be healing or provision, Lord, that you would meet every need according to your riches and according to your glory. You. That as we are the demonstrations of who you are, that we would represent you well. And I thank you, Lord, for your goodness to us. It's in Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for welcoming us back into your house on this Shabbat. I really enjoy sharing these messages with you, and I hope that they're encouraging, that they're connecting the Word of God, not only for your household, but for you personally. You know, I'm trying to always give you something that you can connect with to see that God, the Creator of heaven and earth, it was very intentional when He created us because He was looking for those that He can be friends with. But we have to realize the relationship. You know, God is the Creator of heaven and earth, that we are His kids. But we as his kids, we have to behave and, and follow the rules, so to say, so that we know how we can honor. Because God is holy. He is separate. He is other, but he also loves us as his children. You, you just kind of see this relationship between a father and a love for his children. It's like, I love my son Caleb, but if I let him just do whatever he wants, you know, this the house that you're in right now would have some probably bare walls. I find Marks all the time because he just enjoys having Nerf battles. <laughs> if I let him and his friends just swing from the rooftops or from the chandelier and shooting their Nerf guns and throwing things, I mean, there would be a mess everywhere, right? My house would have no shalom, no peace. So therefore, it's the same as Father God's heart for us. It's like I created this house for us to, to be with and to communicate with, but you got to follow the rules so that things are in order and, and in place. So I always like to lay that foundation so that we don't 
when we start getting into the text and, and, you, and you see Father God correcting the kids or, you know, trying to shift things a different way, or we always say, oh, you know, the God of the Old Testament is this way, the God of the New Testament is that way. It's really not. It's he, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. The only thing that really changes is sometimes the, ro- the rooms, because in his house, he had to do a little remodeling so that the family could come together and that we can see this alignment uh, coming together. So, you know, speaking of family, that's actually the reading for the whole story this week. It's uh, Genesis 25, 19 through 28 uh, to verse 9. And it's really just called the family history. Imagine that. There you go. The very first beginning of the reading. And last week we spoke to this theme of God is trying to uh, connect again with earth. He, he started with Abraham, and he's trying to get his family uh, to grow and, and to prosper and do well, but there's this theme of, you know, Sarah, was bar- she couldn't have kids. So then she has Isaac. Isaac becomes the 40-year-old virgin living in his father's household, not married, no kids, no nothing to carry on the covenant. So then Abraham sends his faithful servant Eleazar, to go find a wife for his son. Gets married, but now here's another issue. Isaac and Rebekah, they can't have kids. And it's interesting that it took 20 years for Isaac to finally cry out to the Lord. I mean, the dude is 60 now. He's 40-year-old in his father's household, not married, no kids. Takes his dad to go out and get him a wife. (laughs) Gets him a wife. And now... Uh, Rebecca has the same issues that the mother-in-law have, not being able to bear children. And so 20 years, it takes them 20 years to say, hey, I need some kids to carry on the covenant. I mean, <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. You think you got problems. I mean, think about Abraham. Probably like, oh my goodness, God, you got to send me back down there to help my family. Anyway, I digress. But it, you see here in uh, chapter 25, verse 19. We're going to get into the genealogy now of the household a little bit, and I want to show you something that's really powerful because I almost feel like the enemy constantly is trying to come in and circumvent the promise of God, which should be no surprise, but also people get in the way, and sometimes it's not just, you know, people that, oh, it's the devil trying to bring me down, the enemy's trying to come after me. Sometimes it's just human nature, and people are jerks, quite honestly. In verse 19, it says, These are the generations of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham fathered Isaac, and Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah, the daughter of Bethuel the Aramean, of Paddan Aram, the sister of Laban the Aramean. You'll hear the name Laban come back again later, or some of you may already know Laban, but you know, there's this family connection. And Isaac prayed to the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord granted his prayer, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. It's amazing. 20 years? Okay. The children struggled together within her, and she said, If it is thus, why is this happening to me? So she's, she's got not only a promise fulfilled, but she's got two kids in her belly. So when she went to inquire of the Lord, the Lord told her, this is what you're feeling like inside. So she, the promise being fulfilled turns out to be a double blessing. She's got a double portion. That's a double answer for, the, for the, um, Isaac's prayer. But interesting enough, in that answer of this double blessing is also a, a rivalry that's forming inside of her. And Rebecca's feeling it inside of her belly. And she goes and inquires the Lord, Like, what's going on inside? The Lord says, two nations are in your room. Isn't that interesting? God promised Abraham, I'm going to make you a great nation, right? Now we fast forward a little bit to the daughter-in-law of Abraham, uh, uh, to uh, Rebecca, and now she's got two different nations inside of her. So you got like one nation growing, and you got two nations growing out of the same woman. I mean... Only God. Two people from within you shall be divided. Why is this happening? It's very interesting. The one shall be stronger than the other, and the older shall serve the younger. You know, God in his omnipotence 
has decided that he is going to create two separate nations out of one nation because I feel like God's saying here, not only am I going to fulfill my promise to you, but I'm interested in growing out the covenant to come outside because I want to reach more and more people. You know, God has told us, the Jewish people, that we are to be the light to the nations. And I find it interesting that he's always expanding the borders. God is about multiplication. He's about um, uh, exclusivity. He's about bringing in a big family in. He's not about exclusivity. He's about inclusiveness. This is an invitation to join in God's family. And all throughout Scripture, he's always trying to expand his borders, get more and more and more of us uh, together. One, once when Jacob was cooking... Oh, so I'm sorry. This is going down now into uh, verse 29. So, so the two boys are born. Remember, two different nations grown with inside Rebekah. And now we're going to fast forward a little bit to where does this conflict really kind of grow out? Because the difference of these two boys is striking. Esau is the oldest, so he is the, he's technically the one carrying the birthright. He's carrying the covenant, and through that covenant, his child is now supposed to expand and bring Abraham's family out. But that's not the case. And even in God's telling of Rebecca, the older shall serve the younger. You know, Jacob is almost, Jacob kind of has this spoiled brat mentality. He's mama's favorite again. You have like the mama's boy <laughs> mentality. Esau, his older brother, is the hunter. He's probably type A personality. He's the guy to go out and get the food. You know, if it, something needs to get done, he's going to get it done. Now, Jacob, if something's got to get done, he's going to go to mommy first and find out, hey, hey, mommy, I have this problem. I need your help. Because you'll see in this story that mom <laughs> goes to help to get her favorite, Jacob, taken care of over the firstborn who's supposed to carry it. I mean, you want to talk about family dynamics. I don't know if you have this kind of family rivalry, but I'm telling you what, this should be a model that if they can get through it and things work out because God promised them, you can get through it. <laughs> so here we're going to go uh, fast um, into the, get more to the point of, uh, of the message. In verse 29, you have once Jacob was cooking stew. Remember, uh, Esau was the one who uh, always brought the food in. Jacob was mom's boy, but so he was kind of like the, the baker, the cooker, you know, kind of like get the house tidied up and nice. Esau came in from the field and he was exhausted. And Esau said to Jacob, let me eat some of that red stew for I am exhausted. Therefore, his name is Edom, Esau has now become Edom because of this. Um, interesting, the color red keeps popping up with his name. Jacob said, sell me your birthright now. Esau said, I am about to die. What good is my birthright to me? Jacob said, swear to me now. So he swore to him and sold his birthright. Remember, this is the covenant that he literally sold. He's selling the rights to carry on the covenant that God promised in him and is his rightful duty to carry on. He sold it for stew because he was starving. He thought little of the birthright. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and lentil stew, and he ate and drank and rose and went his way. Thus, this is the kicker, Esau despised, in English it says, his birthright. If you look in the Hebrew, it doesn't just say he, he despised his birthright. It says the birthright. He despised almost the promise of God for him to fulfill his covenantal duty as the firstborn of the household to carry on the promises of God. And, and you almost take this into your own life. Is there something in my life that God has promised me? Is there something that God has promised you? Is there something in your life that you're not seeing the full uh, ramification, or you're not seeing the fulfillment of, and you're like, you know what? I'm going to belittle what God has esteemed over my life because I'm just not seeing it happen. And you know what? Not only that, but I'm exhausted. If you put it in this context, you saw that Esau was so exhausted from just the day-to-day -day task that he belittled the birthright that was due for him, that was his rightful inheritance, and sold it for stew. 
how we can take this and say, Lord, is there anything in my life that I have belittled? Forgive me. Lord, is there something that you have promised me and do because of the fight, because of the battle? I just cannot fight anymore and I'm ready to sell my birthright. I'm ready to sell the promises that you have for me for a cup of stew. I want to encourage you not to give up. Do not grow weary and well-doing. Everything that you do, everything that God has promised you, He will fulfill it. And sometimes we just need the Spirit of God to come over in us and over our households. And in during this time of Shabbat, as we have lit the candles and we're reminding ourselves of His promise, and we partook of, of the bread and, and of the juice and the wine and remembering the covenant He has, He has provided a table for us to sit at at His household. And now you must keep con- continuing in this fight that no matter what, that you are not going to sell your birthright. Do not sell. Do not give away that which God has promised you. Do not belittle it. Keep on to his promises. You know, there is sometimes a battle over what God has called you to, but he's going to get you through it if you do not give up. So my prayer for you tonight is this. If there is anything of God that he has promised, then you've just decided that I can't because of the fight. I can't because of circumstances. I can't because of my health. I can't because... Don't give excuses any longer. Cry out to the Lord just as Isaac did and see that the Lord will provide in this season. He will give you the strength if it's strength that you need. Now we're going to transition over into a time of worship with my dad. I pray that as you continue to speak out the word of God during this time of worship, that you will build faith in your heart again. Start believing. Start just going back and thinking that what God has promised you. Just put that into your heart and just solidify that, that as of tonight, I will not give in. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his very countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of Jesus, our Messiah. Amen. God bless you. Shabbat Shalom. So the prophet Elijah gathers all the prophets of Baal along with King Ahab and his wife Jezebel up on Mount Carmel. I don't know that it was Shabbat. But there was a showdown. And Elijah says to the people, why do you waver between two opinions? Or why do you limp between two opinions? If the Lord is God, then worship him. But if these sticks and stones are your gods, then worship them. But at least make up your mind. Well, as for me and my house, we've made up our mind. Let it be known today, Lord, that you alone are God. Lord God of Abraham, of Isaac and Israel, let it be known today that you are God, right here in our house. And we offer up our lives as a living sacrifice. Come purify us with your holy fire. Holy fire, you are the Holy One, highly exalted One. And we've come to worship at your holy and you are the holy one highly exalted one and we surrender to your sovereign will O Lord God of Abraham yes Lord we surrender to you to your ways tonight to your will this house is your house this table is your table you are welcome Lord God of Abraham you are of Isaac and Israel so let it be known today that you are God 
There is no other one like you Come now and fill this place And be exalted in our praise And let it be known today That you are God You are God You are the Holy One Highly exalted One And we've come to Worship at your holy hill. Here we come. And you are the holy one, highly exalted one. And we surrender to your sovereign will, O Lord God of Abraham. For the Lord. God. For the Lord, He is our God, and He shall reign forevermore, evermore. For the Lord, He is God, for the Lord, He is our God, and He shall reign forevermore. Highly exalted one, and we've come to worship at your holy hill. And you are the holy one, highly exalted one, and we surrender to your sovereign will, O oh Lord God. Oh Lord God of Abraham, oh Lord God of Abraham. Yes, Lord, we've come to worship at your footstool. So, Lord, tonight we honor you, we invite your presence. Lord, as we invite your presence here at our table, pray, Lord, that you'll be glorified, that you'll be seen by everyone who's here. Let your glory fill this house and your presence fill our hearts, even as your praises fill our mouths. Hmm, that reminds me of a way old song that I wrote decades ago. And maybe one of these Shabbats will share it. Let your glory come. That's what tonight's all about. Invite his glory into your home at your table and see what he will do. God bless you and Shabbat Shalom.